get specific when asking kids to help out. Hi everyone, I'm BJ Muir from JesusHelpMeParent.com and I coach families just like yours to use a heart-based approach to parenting. So if you want practical parenting solutions that develop real and lasting heart change in your kids and family, click that subscribe button right now. Have you ever asked your older child to help their brother or sister but were disappointed by the results when they did? Maybe your kid went over and asked that younger sibling, do you need any help? And of course, that younger sibling looked up predictably and said no. So that older sibling moved on. Or maybe they did contribute a little bit, but it was far from what you were thinking when you said go help. This can be so frustrating to watch as parents, but really the issue is not with our kids. It's often with us. You see, when we ask a kid to help out, there's a lot of room for interpretation in that statement. And the problem happens when we expect more, but our kids deliver less. There are really three ways to help out, and we need to distinguish these for our kids so they can be successful when we ask them to help out. The first way to help out is by checking in. When we ask a kid to help a sibling by checking in, we're really just asking them to make sure things are okay. This is typically the default level that our kids operate at when we say go help out. But the second way is what we often mean more like. So the second way to help out is by jumping in. When we want a kid to jump in, we want that kid to commit to more. We want that kid to see the need we see and act upon it. We want them to jump in and help out until the job is done. When we say Go help your brother clean up. We expect that kid to notice things like the unswept floor, the dishes that need to be dried, and put them away and jump in until the job is done. But we often don't specifically say jump in, and so our kid doesn't know what we're really expecting. A great biblical example of jumping in is Rebecca in the Old Testament. She sees a traveler who needs water, notices the camels as well, and waters them also. She jumps in until the job's done. Priscilla and Aquila jumped in to support Paul and the work he was doing and became co-laborers for the gospel. When we jump in, it has a powerfully positive impact on the work that gets done and the people involved. The third way to help out is to stay in. When we want a kid to stay in, we're really asking them to truly empathize. It's no longer about the job that needs to be done. It's about a person who needs to be loved. We want our kids to notice things like a younger sister who's feeling scared or sad and really needs an older sibling to be there or a younger brother who, who's trying to ride a two-wheeler and is kind of worried and afraid. They really could use someone out on the driveway cheering them on. Join us and stay in. Staying in says, I'm here to help and I'm here to stay until you're ready. There are lots of biblical examples of staying in. Think of all the people at the crucifixion who were there for Jesus. Mary, Mary Magdalene, John. They all stayed in in Jesus' neediest hour. Jesus didn't need them there, but he was greatly blessed and encouraged by them staying in. Ruth stays in with Naomi. Jonathan stays in with David. Paul even expresses his gratitude for fellow laborers like Timothy, who stayed in with him through the difficult days of his ministry. When we stay in, we are there to stay and help finish the job and support the person in the process. So how can we help our kids know what we mean when we say help out? What we're really doing is we're trying to help our children develop that area of their conscience that the Bible calls caring about others. It starts with us being more precise in our language, telling our kids not just to go help out, but telling them what we mean. Go help out, meaning go stay in, go jump in, go check in, and describing that a little bit more. We then need to help our kids find opportunities to jump in or to stay in in our family. We need to model for them what it looks like and, and encourage them to join us when we jump in to help out in family life or stay in in family life. Finally, we want to help our kids understand how jumping in and staying in improves relationships. Others feel cared for and loved when we stay in, when we jump in. It communicates value and worth to someone when we give of our time and talents in this way. Want to learn more about how to do this? 
Check out my latest videos on YouTube for more, including a link to a free printable with the checking in, jumping in, and staying in language illustrated for you and your kids that you can hang up in your house and start using today. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and remember to follow Jesus Help Me Parent on Facebook and Instagram for daily parenting tips, strategies, and inspiration that help you parent using a heart-based approach. Thanks so much for listening and I'll talk to you soon.